Okay, so IO4 is the fourth uh, intellectual output and the title, uh, the aim of IO4 was mapping the new ILSA course. All right. Um, okay, so the aim of this intellectual output was to map the course and we based our work, as uh, Franz uh, told you a few minutes ago, on the results delivered by the previous IOs and taking the qualifications framework of the European higher education area into account. So what we wanted to do was to design the structure of the course with modules and units to formulate learning outcomes, to make suggestions for methods and of teaching and learning, make suggestions for assessment and for teaching material. More specifically, we aimed at providing a course for the two different contexts proposed by the ILSA project, i.e. television and live events, including education, educational settings. And we wanted to do that on two levels, a master level course and a professional course suited for lifelong learning. Um, so IO4, as I told you a few minutes ago, has been led by uh, U Antwerp, which has been actively uh, involved in curriculum design uh, activities in other EU-funded projects, such as um, ACT, Accessible Culture and Training, and ADLA Pro. And the U Antwerp that I showed you that a few minutes ago consists of different members, uh, Aline, uh, Iris, Veil, Anthony, and myself. Um, the final result of the I.O. is, uh, on the one hand, a graphic representation of the proposed course design, visually representing its modular structure, and, on the other hand, a sort of Excel spreadsheet detailing all the learning outcomes of the course. So I will start with the graphic representation. And this is it the graphic rep representation of our course. So what you see here in blue are, are the foundational components, then the core components in red, and applied components in green. So the three foundational components or modules are aimed at acquiring the necessary knowledge and skills that students need before starting to learn re-speaking. These knowledge and skills identified in IO1, IO2, and IO3 relate to pre-recorded subtitling, module 1b, and to simultaneous interpreting, module And these two modules weight four ECTS each. And just to remember, one ECTS is 25 to 30 hours of work for the student all in. So including face-to-face -face, uh, lectures, online lectures, reading, assignment, tasks, everything. But in addition, and in line with the project name, Interlingual Life Subtitling for Access, a foundational component dedicated to media and live events accessibility has been added and is actually considered the very first foundational module. The reason is that offering access to media and live events through Interlingual Life Subtitling is only one facet of accessibility and this is something students have to be aware of. So to be allowed to take the core components, intralingual respeaking and interlingual respeakings, and my colleagues will come back to that in the next presentations, students must have acquired the knowledge and skills taught in the three foundational components, either through the modules that we suggest in our course or through an existing course from their master program. We expect module 1b and 1c to be offered in Masters in Translation or Master in Interpreting, but we think that module 1a about accessibility might not so be easily available in existing programs. Now, um, as far as prerequisites are concerned, so we developed the course with the following profile in mind. Students should have a BA in translation and interpreting or languages or any BA with a C1 level in at least one foreign language. And for professionals, we have actually no prerequisites, but obviously when they take the course, they should be aware that the, the course was also designed for students having the profile I have just mentioned. 
Right. Uh, now, this is um, a, a fragment of the sheet, so the, the, the Excel sheet that I told you about a few minutes ago. So it's just an example, a fragment. Uh, here in the first column, this is the name of the uh, module, 1A. The second column, one of the units of that module, in this case, human diversity and disability. And here you can see that we have five learning outcomes for that particular unit with uh, so the learning out uh, learning outcomes is described in the one two three fourth column and then um, when we designed those learning outcomes and I, I move on to yes to the next slide so we had to take the different um, types of learning outcomes into account so we have learning outcomes from the cognitive affective and psychomotor domain and per domain, there are several levels possible. And we follow the Bloom taxonomy, which has also been used by Kennedy 2006 in his uh, writing and using learning outcomes, a practical guide. OK, so here, just an example of a learning, a learning outcome from the cognitive domain. Uh, by the way, many learning outcomes, obviously, from this course are from that particular domain. Here on the next slide, um, an example of um, a learning outcome from the effective domain. Um, there are not so many of, the, of these in our course. And then uh, on the next slide, a learning outcome of the uh, psychomotor uh, domain. Um, OK, well, actually, that's it, because everything will be described in details in the next presentation. So. Uh, I thank you for your attention, and if there are any questions, just feel free to ask. Let's see whether we have a question in the chat box. Oh, okay. Um, are these, okay, are, um, just, are they currently any active course? So, the course, you, I, I guess you mean the course, uh, the ILSA course will be uh, available soon on the platform, but this is something my colleague uh, from the Polish team will tell you in a few minutes. Uh, core components will be explained later, yes. Um, they will be in IO5, so if you have a look at the program, we have different presentations. So now we are just um, having a short description of the IOs, but IO5 obviously is about the course, and each module of the course will be uh, explained in detail in the next presentations. The program is online. Um, I guess we could uh, share a link. Um, yes, uh, Pablo, of course, you can reply. Yes. OK, thank you, Iris, for the link to the program. Yeah, um, can you hear me? <clears throat> yes. I thought I'd just mention about the courses. Um, just before the panel, I'll show a slide of the different courses available, um, at least by the consortium of the ILSA course. So apart from the ILSA course, which is open, um, so that's a different thing, then our universities are currently providing training in interlingually speaking in different modes uh, and in different languages. So you have in Vienna, obviously, they're, they're dealing with with German, English, then uh, in the University of Warsaw, you're going from seven languages into Polish, um, then University of Antwerp as well, also face-to-face, -face, over six months, um, and uh, several languages. We'll show what languages those are just before the panel. And at the University of Vigo, we have an online course running for also one semester. Um, and again, in our case, it's English into Spanish and Spanish into English. But uh, we'll give full details of that um, just before the panel, where we talk about kind of determination and the impact that um, the project is having. So yes, the open course, the open ILSA course, and then um, at least our universities are providing uh, those training courses, and there are a few more as well. So things are kind of moving and progressing. Okay, uh, I guess this answers uh, the question. Um, okay, thank you, Annalisa. So you uh, uh, also will offering you'll be offering interlingual from English into Italian next year. Thank you, thank you. All right. Okay, so um, are these courses fully online? So. I guess, Jota, you ask about those courses offered in universities. So 
Um, Pablo answers, yes, fully online. Um, as far as you, Antwerp is concerned, not it's not online yet, at, at least. 